I was, uh, I'm very excited for this session, so I started a bit earlier than I should have. Um, so welcome everyone to another Kumi session. It's uh, a pleasure to be with all of you here and for those joining now. Um, before I introduce uh, the speaker and we start discussing art as a form of resistance, um, let me go over some housekeeping rules. So firstly, this session is recorded and live streamed. So if you wish to be anonymous and to um, not reveal your video, please do so now uh, before we start. Um, also, when Rania will finish with her presentation, any questions, uh, please put them on the chat and then I will ask them towards Rania and remain muted at all times uh, during this session. So now that we've got the housekeeping rules out of the way, uh, let me introduce our special speaker, and then we can begin uh, conversing and learning about art as a form of resistance within the Palestinian context. So Rania Elias was the director of Yabus Central Cultural Center in occupied Jerusalem since 1998, and resigned after 25 years at the end of 20, 2022. That is exactly my age. Uh, I was born in 98. So uh, it's a long time. She was responsible for local and international public relations, business management, events management, project coordination, and funding. She was a leading figure behind the renovation of Cinema El Quds as it was transformed into the largest and one of the most important cultural centers in Jerusalem, Yabus Cultural Center. This was accomplished despite the obstacles imposed on Palestinian organizations that aim to function in Jerusalem. Yabus provides a venue to celebrate and share cultural traditions, interact with Palestinian artists and other artists around the world, and participate in a range of activities that stimulate and expand the creativity, diversity, and artistry of Jerusalem and Palestinian cultural expressions. In 1995, Rania was the acting director of the Bethlehem International Festival, held by the Palestinian Ministry of Culture, and from 1995 to 1998, she served as the administrative director of Rewak Center for Architectural um, Con Conservation in Ramallah. Since 1998, she has been the director of Yabu Center's annual Jerusalem Festival. In 2007, she was appointed as a member of the National and uh, Executive Committee of El Quds, capital of Arabic of Arab culture, 2009. In 2009, where she also served as head of the events committee. Rania is on the board of trustees of several international and Palestinian organizations and networks and has been a prominent speaker at various international local conferences and meetings that dealt with cultural and human rights issues in Palestine. As a fieldwork researcher, she contributed to several studies and she has been actively involved in voluntary social work that deals with various types of human rights violations. Uh, so with that introduction, I'd like to welcome Rania. Rania, are you with us? Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sabil, and thank you for Kumi, our Rise Up team, for inviting me to participate in this session. And thank you all uh, to all the participants uh, with us and uh, from all around the world. I can see some faces who I know. So thank you for your time. And it's my pleasure to be uh, with you. Um, actually, I, I would like to share first to start by sharing. Okay. Is it working? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, 
in Palestine, we are struggling to maintain our presence in the prevailing circumstances we are living in, believing that our cultural heritage is being targeted as it represents the essence of a nation and its during ability to resist occupation and to keep on going. Our culture is reflected in our identity and is the means through which we confront crisis. Um, I can't see the just one second. Yeah. Uh, Usually, art and culture are helpless in the face of occupation. We think nobody is going uh, to write a book or uh, to do music or uh, sing when bullets are flying around their ears or their house is being demolished. But we are mistaken as creativity comes from places which suffers from difficult conditions and hardship like Palestine. It give us, gives us the ability to bear the unbearable, not by simply accepting uh, the situation, but by thinking about it and trying to find the mechanism how to deal with it and living it as well. For that creative people, creative people advocates when the rule of justice and rule of law has been eroded, when social services are missing and there is no freedom of expression or freedom of movement or press, the artist usually takes on the role of government critique, people's advocate, community organizers, human rights defender, or even movement leader. But more importantly, they can create spaces for freedom of expressions and encounters and place where people can feel safe, can see productivity and tangible results. Um. Sorry, but a bit of problem with the, with the technology. Today, and in memory of Najil Ali, who was assassinated on the 22nd of July 1987 and was shot in London and passed away on the 29th of August, like today, in 1987, he was well known by his creation of Handala and for the political criticism of the Arab regimes and for Israel in his works. He has been described as the greatest Palestinian cartoonist. We affirm that culture is a kind of resistant, which can deliver the message with a drawing, with a song or poem and dance and expose the occupation and its policy, such as Najil Ali, Ghassan Kanafani, Kamal Nasser and others. The Palestinian identity and culture had been continuously suppressed by the Israeli occupation in different ways and means. When you encounter soldiers and police chasing clowns and children and forbidding the flying of balloons and forbidding traditional dancings in the streets, then you can be sure that you are in Palestine. They are trying to make us ignorant about our history and culture, preventing artists from coming to Palestine, international artists or artists from the Arab world, de denying entry visas to international artists, intellectuals, writers, and banning cultural events and stopping them by military orders, renaming of street names, stealing out our hummus and Palestinian embroidery, attacking and closing cultural events, and arresting cultural acti activists and chasing them in every way and means. But as an assertive society with a rich heritage, we Palestinians have been able to express ourselves with our powerful voices through culture and arts. For us, 
cultural resistance is carried out in many forms, such as establishing a national orchestra, creating an exhibition, building a school of music, renovating a theater, organizing a festival, conferences, seminars, lectures, training kids to dance our traditional dabke, know how to wear or to eat or how to behave as well. Even though organizing a concert in Palestine these days is not an easy task, in fact, it is a very tough job unless you have hope, power, and others contributing to our uh, efforts. The political situation influences our goals, our programs, and our entire presence at it deprives us from our ability to move, work freely, hence to lead a normal life like all human beings. Cultural institution, and one of them, Yabus Cultural Center, who was running for the I was running for the past 25 years and so many other institutions has to cancel festivals, concerts and several events for reason relating to the general political situation and the difficulties of having artists or groups and musicians coming and performing. Even Palestinian artists living in West Bank towns such as Ramallah or Jinian cannot come to Jerusalem. We cannot go to Gaza. In several kilometers between Jerusalem and Ramallah, they are not allowed to come and to perform in Jerusalem, except if they have permission. Not mentioning the closure on Gaza for the past uh, years as well. Israeli occupation prevents international artists and musicians from participating in cultural events in Palestine. The year 2008 marked the 60th anniversary of the Nakba. In human terms, that year saw the mass deportation of millions of Palestinians from their cities and villages. In commemoration of these events in Palestine history, we have organized a fest festival called Songs of Freedom. We invited the group in Tilimani from Chile to come and perform. One of the artists was denied entry, being detained for 24 hours at, at the airport of al before being sent back on the first flight to Chile. And during the incursion of the Israeli occupation forces into Ramallah as well in uh, March 9th, 20, 2002, several cultural premises were invaded, including the National Conservatory of Music, the Peace Center in Bethlehem, the Sakakini Center, and the Popular Arts Center in Ramallah. The main door of the National Conservatory of Music was open using explosives, which caused major damage in, 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 uh, in the center. They broke everything inside, even cellos and other instruments were broken, as well as music CDs and books were thrown on the floor or over the place. The Israeli massacres in Gaza, especially in 2008 or during the war uh, other other uh, massacres happened UN schools were bombed as well at the school of music in in Gaza where hundreds of civilians were killed after uh, 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 exploded outside the UN school and hundreds of people were sheltered from the continuing Israeli offensive the year this year before one month uh, when they raided Jenin, they bombed as well, and they raided the Freedom Theater in Jenin. Lately, and during the Corona curfew, on Wednesday, 22nd of July, 2020, at 8.40 a.m., uh, the, the Israeli police and special forces raided our home. Uh, just one second. Uh, my children were ordered to stay put in a room while the police searched our bedroom and confiscated our passports, document, computers, phone, and car, after which they led me to the Yabu Center and my husband, Suhail Khouri, the general director of the National Conservatory of Music and Musician, to an interrogation center in Jabal Abu Ghnaim, where there is a big base for a big settlement there. At the same time, they raided the National Conservatory of Music and Yamus, where they confiscated documents, tens of files, computers, CCTV equipment. Then we were taken to the inter interrogation center and we stayed there for 12 hours until they released us on bail at 9 uh, p.m. I was arrested again on the 25th of July. 
uh, when the head of the European Union and more than 27 diplomats, representatives and consuls organized a visit of solidarity to Yabuz and the Music Conservatory. And I was taken again to the same interrogation center for five hours, and then I was received, er, released under conditions. I was not allowed to go to Yabuz, the place where I work, for a whole one month and a half. I was not allowed to communicate with the board of directors of Yabuz for a month. I was not allowed to go to Salah Din Street, one of the main streets in Jerusalem. And, not, and I, I was not allowed to communicate with anyone related to the case. And for more than 25 years, I have been working as the director of the Yabuz Center, as you mentioned, the center that has proven its local Arab and international presence and in reviving the cultural life in Jerusalem and preserving the Palestinian identity. For more than 25 years, I have been subjected every day to direct and indirect harassment by the occupation. However, in clear, in clear violation of all humanitarian and cultural laws and basic international human rights treaties, the Israeli Interior Ministry refused to renew my family reunification permit in condition that I should not have anything to do with the Yabuz Cultural Center, the place where I work, I created, and I was running since 1998. I believe culture and innovation became essential parts of a modern way of Palestinian resistance. The real challenge for us is to transform culture and the arts into ongoing reality, ongoing reality that will support us to sustain our existence on our humanity in our beloved country. Culture in the state of Palestine will be well, however, as long as poets, writers, artists, and intellectuals are active, as long site producers and creators are aware of the edge on which they stand, as long we are doing everything in our power to save the soul from despair, from uh, from being cast off into distant memory, uh, as long as we remain keen to preserve the authenticity of human values, of timeless truth and the beauty. Culture will be well because we will continuously search for new ways to preserve our heritage, let our voices be heard, exercise our right to write and work in culture remain in existence and hope, and we will continue to fight for the freedom of our legitimate aspiration, even if the occupation continues. Just to give an example of cultural life in Jerusalem and in Palestine, uh, I want to sh show you a one uh, minute video. Oops. في فلسطين لما عزف بشكل خاص شعوري بيكون مستحيل ألاقي شعور هذا في أي دولة تانية لما نكون قاعدين دقة دقات القلوب بتكون بتختلف بتكونش عن خوف Uh, Rania, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, there's no sound. There seems to be no sound in the video. No sound.
Yeah, I think we'll just read the subtitles. ام رانيا yes. oh. الشير بقدر انا اعمل يطلع لا لا خلاص um, I, I, uh, I chose this video because it has an English subtitle and with English but we have different samples of, of different uh, groups and um, uh, projects and programs for cultural events in Palestine that shows how rich our culture is and what is happening really in Palestine. Um, one other example of our resistance as well, especially in Jerusalem, because we have several cultural centers, several institutions, several events, uh, during the year, we have four annual festivals happening in Jerusalem. It's a kind of uh, reviving the cultural life in Jerusalem, preserving the cultural identity, and as well to give people hope to come and participate and feel safe, and as well to have a, a relation uh, together. And each festival has a specific, specific theme, either Stand Up Jerusalem, uh, uh, freedom, um, freedom songs, uh, special programs for uh, children. So every time we have a different theme related to specific uh, issue in Jerusalem. We have two dance festivals every year, every year. We have a music school, the National Conservatory of Music, that teaches more than 500 students in, in, in Jerusalem, just in Jerusalem. I'm not mentioning the other cities, what we have around. We have numerous annual performances and production uh, in literature, music, dance, theater, and more. Uh, we have uh, several cultural centers as well functioning since 25, 30 years. We have musicians, museums, such as Museum of uh, Hind al-Husseini College, Wujud, uh, in the old city of uh, of Jerusalem, we have uh, d different Dabke dance groups, and we have several uh, individual uh, artists as well functioning and working uh, uh, in the city. But we always ask ourselves uh, ourselves and faced with uh, different questions: Where do we stand? Even with doing all this kind of cultural programs and identity? How do we use art as a way to express ourselves? What is the message behind what we are doing? If we are living in any part of the world, in Switzerland, in France, in the United States, uh, the way things, I traveled a lot, and the way how uh, cultural events have been organized or are organized in festival and so on, they concentrate more on the artistic program, on the production itself, on the light, on the message that they have uh, from the cultural programs. They have full support of, of, of as well, governments, individuals, and, and so on. But here in Palestine, when we organize culture, cult, cultural events, it's a way to express ourselves as well. But we concentrate more on the logistics issue, when we organize organize an event, it, it is a mission impossible these days to do it. So we see it as a kind of resistance as well to say we are here, we have our Palestinian cultural identity, and we fight for this to, to stay and as well to revive it. But where we are heading in the cultural sec sector, uh, the clear answer we have is that everything we do and offer falls within the process of continuous engagement with the occupier and the concept of resistance. Culture is resistance for us, and resistance is also a, a kind of our, it's a culture. Therefore, our guiding principles is that culture was and will remain a form of resistance, challenge, and steadfastness in our occupied uh, land. Under this slogan, we work and we will continue to work towards surviving our beloved 
country. Besides, it is important that we sustain, protect, especially the young generation and kids and children to stay human and not to lose our dignity as well. Our role at the moment is to look after or to take care of human beings and not just stones. Uh, we always say if they demolish houses, uh, a time will come and we build them again. But if they kill the spirit, the identity and dignity of one person, it is impossible to have him or her or her back except after several years and when you work on it and you, you have to build as well uh, again. And we always say as well uh, that in South Africa, they sang and danced against apartheid. In Chile, they sang against dictatorship. And in Palestine, we shall sing for our freedom to our own tunes and to those of Friends of Freedom as well. I remember a statement by the Palestinian author Tawfiq Zayad saying, I never carried a rifle on my shoulder or pulled a trigger. All I have is unshakable faith and an infinite love for my people in pain. And this is what we always carry in our hearts, in our souls, in our minds, when we work on, on, on organizing our cultural activities and programs in Jerusalem and in Palestine in, in general. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, thank you very much for that uh, very powerful and moving presentation. Um, I'd like to ask you about, because we are commemorating the the martyrdom of uh, Naji Ali. Uh, he was, who was considered one of the most strongest and well-known prophets of the Palestinian people, uh, who criticized not only the refugee situation in, in Lebanon and the occupation and the apartheid um, in Israel, but also Palestinian Authority. Um, what, how has Naji Ali, his story, his art, uh, inspired you in any way affected you in your work in your um, activities in Yabus and beyond? Well, uh, as I said, and I mentioned in my presentation today, um, where uh, Najil Ali passed away after being assassinated on the 22nd of, uh, of August, he inspired so many people. Uh, we were raised and uh, by all these cartoonists uh, by Najil Ali. Um, he inspired so many artists as well. Uh, some of them, we worked with them as well in, uh, in our work at Yabus and other, other places. Um, it, uh, the, the issue of Najil Ali, it is not just that he criticized Israel and the occupation, and, uh, and, uh, but he criticized as well the Arab regimes. And all his cartoonists, you can see this in different uh, ways that he, uh, he worked on it uh, and sharply critical uh, um, so many figures and ideas and politics and political leaders as, uh, as well. Uh, he inspired us uh, by always being strong and uh, encourage us to speak out and loud and not to be afraid to express ourselves despite what we are going through or went through or still uh, as well. And um, I think from the younger generation around and while we are working with this young generation, everyone is wear wearing handala. You can see it uh, with the necklace, with a T-shirt and so on. So Najil Ali is still living in the minds and hearts and the ideas of this young generation and in our arts as well. I'd like to touch on that point of the young generation and art. Uh, in the summer of 2021, we all witnessed uh, what is called the Unity Intifada. And when you went to Sheikh Jarrah, you saw uh, art on the different walls. Yeah. Um, 
in your experience being working at your booth and being in Jerusalem and with the recent events, how are the younger generation uh, being creative, being um, using art as a form of resistance, as a form of dignity of who they are as Palestinians? Uh, well, uh, it's not just the case of Sheikh Jarrah. It's all around, even in refugee camps uh, in, in, in Palestine and in other parts of the world, or Palestinians in the diaspora. Um, uh, is um, through cultural centers, through individuals, through uh, even movements in the streets uh, that use art as a way, like, for example, in Sheikh Jarrah or in Silwan as well, you can see several events happening uh, using uh, arts as a way to express themselves. We saw what happened at uh, Sheikh Jarrah when they brought groups dancing in the streets, dabke, or drawing uh, at the walls of a Sheikh Jarrah, uh, or doing a day of uh, activities for the children as well uh, there. We use this kind of tools uh, to express ourselves, as I said, we use it to, a, a way to uh, to give our messages as well. Is it against uh, the occupation, our needs, our rights for freedom, our rights for expression, expression, our rights to live freely uh, as well? Um, and we can see it everywhere in 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 Palestine. In in uh, Masafir Yatta, yesterday there was an event as well where they took so many um, with the red uh, um, uh, nose clowns and so on that they did an event for the children there. Uh, even with with the uh, with the traditional cooking with events uh, there it is a kind and a tool to be used uh to to support the people uh to support their steadfastness and to express themselves through using art yeah and, and it's interesting i think i was reading a book the other day where um after the nakba straight after the what happened in 48 one of the strongest ways of uh, promoting palestinian dignity of organizing of gathering of people was poetry people reciting poetry um and because palestinians you mentioned in your presentation are, are suffering under you know being present being alive whether it's uh, being alive in our identity or being alive physically um could you speak, and, and, and there's many forms of resistance, but what is particularly powerful and unique about art? Um, because it seems to me, like you mentioned Naji Ali, he, he was assassinated, but he still lives on through his art. C could, you, could you explain a bit more about the uniqueness of art as a form of resistance? Yes, um, I mean, uh, from a Nakbe and then a Nakse and before and throughout all these years, we have witnessed so many intellectuals, writers, uh, poets, uh, artists, musicians uh, as well, who worked on expressing the situation in their works. Like when, when we hear um, uh, Kamal Nasser uh, poem, and and what he when what he wrote when we hear Mahmoud Darwish or Samih Al Qasim, or uh, when we read books related to different writers as well uh, nowadays or uh, or before or when we see the paintings of Sleiman Mansour or Samia Halabi or others when we hear the music of uh of different artists musicians uh like amin nasser tanya rima tarazi uh, suhail khouri sabreen uh, uh, when we see uh watch the the performance of al funun dance groups and others uh this is the uniqueness of of this work is it uh um reflects and speaks about the situation while using uh, their artwork to express themselves. When, when they talk about it in the poem, when they draw it in, in the work of artists, when they dance it with the dabke and um, 
the production that they do like lately, like El Funun Dance Group, they have done a performance where they uh, they spoke about Walid Dakka. And part of the performance was to speak about this prisoner who is suffering from cancer and the Israeli occupation is not allowing, uh, they, they don't want to free him even for uh, medical uh, purpose. Uh, they use dance as well to express the, the issue of uh, assassinating and killing Shireen Abu Akhle. Shireen Abu Akhle was was there in, in, in this performance. When Banat al Uts performed uh, their music and the song of Shirin Abu Aqle uh, that was wrote by Fida al Qutb in, in Jerusalem and composed by Suhail Khouri, or when my son Shadi was arrested and my husband Suhail composed a music for Shadi, especially wrote by his teacher, Arabic teacher uh, as well. This is a way how we use these kind of arts to express what we are going through or went through and as well uh usually my my children and the younger generation we remind them always we speak about the situation and so on but when we when they see it in this material in in this writings in this kind of art it is easier for them to absorb it and to stay in their memory and to speak about it as well and me maybe as well uh, the people who are watching and seeing and reading like the audience can understand the message as well in a different way definitely i think art you know it, it speaks in a, in a way that can really be accessible to all people and can and is very powerful and one thing that I'm interested, um, you know, in, in Palestinian liberation theology is that a lot of artists who come from non-Christian backgrounds, maybe secular or Muslim, they depict Christ in certain ways, a crucified God as a symbol of Palestine. Um, and for me, there's there's something very interesting with art is that it, it acts as a unifier. It transcends the fragmentation of whether you're a Palestinian from the West Bank or Gaza or Jerusalem or in the diaspora, uh, Christian, Muslim, there's something that uh, art transcends. It transcends the languages that we speak, the legal statuses that we're under, the material circumstances that we are in. Uh, from your knowledge and from your experience, how has art been uh, a source of unification for people who are oppressed for the Palestinian people? Who are what? Sorry, I, I didn't hear you well. Uh, people who are under oppression, people who are fragmented. How has art been a tool for unifying Palestinian people, for the, Palest for the Palestinian people in general? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, through what we are going uh, through as well, uh, art as well unified people. I, I remember well when uh, Muhammad Asaf was uh, nominated for uh, one of of the um, Arab uh, competition at uh, best singer or best voice and so on. He's from Gaza and people from the West Bank uh, as well. This this kind of unity that we felt when we all supported uh, Muhammad Asaf uh, from Lebanon, Palestinians who are in refugee camps, from the Arab world, from Palestine as well. We felt that we are all together united for a specific cause in using arts as well to give a message that Palestinians like Muhammad Asaf and others have a message uh, in, uh, in, their, in their work. Um, as well, uh, we, uh, if we take Rafif Ziyadeh, uh, who is a very well-known uh, Palestinian uh, living in the diaspora. And the way she uh, promote the cause in her way of arts, as well unified us, even not just Palestinians, but as well internationals who understand the world and who understand the language. And in her way of expressing the the uh, the situation and talking about it in uh, for specific uh, causes she unified as well people 
who are fighting for freedom, not just in Palestine and in other parts of the uh, of the world. She unified people on a specific cause using her arts uh, uh, as well. So it's it's a way, a common language that can be understood by people especially when you have uh, the barrier of language in, in Arabic, English or French and so on, but music or arts, uh, paintings or dances and so on can unify people on a specific cause and can work, work together to give the message needed through this kind uh, uh, of art. Roger Waters is a good sample on that. Um, Roger Waters, uh, as well with his work and with his messages and with his uh, um, uh, mess uh, the way uh, he promotes the cause of Palestine in his concerts, in his speeches, in his press releases as, as well, can unify so many people from all around the world in Europe in uh, in United States using his voice and his music uh, as well this is this is what uh, unified the people in a different way and and using arts uh, like this yeah um, I'm going to ask a few questions from the chat. Uh, that okay. have been posted by different uh, attendees. So the first one is, um, you mentioned that there's oppression, the suppression of Palestinian culture and art, um, but do you think that might have a negative uh, impact for Israel? Because the more they suppress, the more it might backlash because people will be even more determined to do art because they're restricted of expressing their creativity. Um, uh, I think uh, this is a good question because um, uh, since several years, so many artists, so many cultural centers, so many institutions uh, were under attack by the Israeli occupation. One of them is a Bush cultural center. I mean, so many activities were prevented, were banned by military order uh, for a lecture or um, a literature festival or even a memorial for uh, uh, Dr. Subhi Ghoshe, who passed away in Jordan. He's a writer as, uh, as well. Um, and they try by using force um uh, by closing centers by closing cultural activities by uh, uh, as well arresting artists that people will feel afraid and will they will not continue using art as a tool to express the situation and talk about the cause and and so on on the contrary i always say uh, on the contrary I, I i mean this is a way that people will talk more work more uh, on culture, work more on music and dance and, and so on. Uh, my concern is that they will continue doing this and pressuring more people on that to make them feel afraid and, and they don't care. Um, they don't care what the results will be. I mean, when they came and arrested me and arrested my husband Suhail and raided the, the institutions, um our only crime according to them when they said the, why they arrested us that we promote palestinian culture this was the reason behind arresting us and then of course afterwards they started putting false allegations against us and uh, and so on um uh, this was uh highlighted and written and covered by the international media uh, by the presence, as I said in my presentation, that so many diplomats came, the EU did a, a stand with Yabus and we did a conference and, uh, and so on. In front of the diplomats and in front of the press conference, in the middle of the press conference, they came and arrested me in front of everyone. So they don't care about even the diplomats or the press or media and coverage and so on they feel that they are above law no one is holding them accountable against what they are doing not just killing people arresting children uh, confiscating lands demolishing houses and so on but as well 
arresting cultural activists and attacking them uh, clearly in front of, of, uh, of everyone. I mean, um, this is the way how they continue to, to put more pressure on people to stop acting, working, talking, uh, producing, and, and uh, as well promoting culture, uh, especially Palestinian culture in, in, uh, in the city or in Palestine as well. I think uh, it's, you know, the Israelis accusing you of promoting Palestinian culture as a crime shows you that to be a Palestinian, to be born as a Palestinian, for them is, is in itself a crime. Is, well, is it... well, it seems so. It seems that being Palestinian is a crime for them. I mean, the way they are, at, are attacking people and attacking children, attacking cultural activists and so on, for them, the crime is you are Palestinian, especially that it was clear by the statement of the police uh, and they gave the statement for Amira Hass, which she wrote about it in, in Haaretz as well, that our uh, crime was that we're promoting Palestinian culture. So um, yes, I think this is this is a main problem that we are facing uh, in in Palestine. Yeah. I think one of the most amazing things to experience is how people around the world who are under oppressive circumstances, under repression, still manage to be creative uh, and still manage to produce a message that can transcend whatever circumstances that they're in. And this relates to the next question. So artists have experienced restrictions ever since, ever since the Naksa including prohibition of the four colors of the Palestinian flag. Um, how have artists adjusted and overcome these restrictions and repressions um, that Israel and Zionism is putting uh, on Palestinians? You are on mute, uh, Rania? Just, I want to mention as well that during the first Intifada in the 80s, so many artists, dancers, uh, musicians were arrested and they were put in prison uh, for producing music or being part of a dance group or for, uh, for, uh, for arts that they work uh, on and, uh, and so on. Nowadays, uh, during our uh, work, uh, the only way to to work and and try uh, to overcome all these obstacles that we are facing, all this aggression, all this attack against artists, uh, we use different tools and different ways in um, in uh, in our work. I mean, in Jerusalem, uh, the only way we use is the legal. I mean, one of the one of the issues that we use is we 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 work very closely with lawyers in protecting ourselves uh, from being arrested or attacked or uh, closing any event or closing any any uh, any institution. This doesn't mean that they don't do it. On the contrary, they continue and they uh, they they do and they arrest and stop cultural activities and so on. The other thing that we should work on, and we're working on it, and uh, we continue working on it, is uh, lobbying uh, and talking about the situation and meeting people and expressing exactly what's happening here in Palestine and asking people to speak out and loud about the situation and what's happening here. Um, as well, contacting um, people who are in, in, in different positions like human rights uh, organizations, uh, UN Special Rapporteur to Human Rights, uh, contacting parliaments, congressmen, senators, uh, and politicians, uh, and as well um, sending reports about what, what's happening here, sending videos, photos, and, and, and so on. This is the ways and tools that we use as well uh, in order for us to continue being able to survive and working uh, and trying to uh, protect ourselves in a way 
um, because the image and what's happening here should be exposed and people should know exactly uh, what is happening for the cultural sector as well in, in, uh, in, uh, in Palestine. It's not easy uh, and uh, it needs a lot of work needs a lot of follow up and as well having lawyers working by our side can and financially it's it's uh, it's very difficult but this is the only way to survive and continue otherwise you don't have any any other option either you will be silent and you stop working and you won't be practicing what what you like to do culture arts and 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 so on or some people uh, lost hope and then they stood aside and couldn't function anymore. But you have others who have been working for the past 40 years and didn't lose hope and trying to promote and work and produce and reach out to people. Um, travel outside and speak about the situation, perform. I mean, we have so many groups performing all around the world, being part of festivals, uh, conferences, uh, events happening in the world. And this is the way how we speak and we protect ourselves and try to continue be active in in as well uh, in what's happening here. Yeah, I, I I would like to add on that question also that um, artists have been using a watermelon to yes. overcome using uh, the Palestinian flag, which has all the colors. So that's become a symbol of Palestine, and that's a creative way. And my mother in the first Intifada would knit sweatshirts within the colors. Oh, uh, yeah. So my brother would wear <laughs> uh, the colors of Palestine. So it you know, it, lately, lately the watermelon and uh, is used in different ways for bags, t-shirts, earrings, and so on, because we are not allowed, like in Jerusalem, we are not allowed to raise the flag anymore. They will arrest people, they can put you in prison, and, and you can see if you follow up what's happening in Sheikh Jarrah, especially in Sheikh Jarrah and other areas, we're not allowed to raise the flag in uh, in any demonstration, in uh, in the streets, and so, and so on. So we're using uh, the watermelon and uh, in different ways artistically, especially Khalid al-Hurani has been working on it uh, and participating in different exhibitions around the world uh, 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 talking about this issue and, and using it in a way to, to express the uh, how we use arts to express ourselves, especially when we're talking about flag in, 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 in this way. Um, I'd like to ask you one last question before we, we attempt to, you know, try and see how we can be in solidarity with one another, how we can be in solidarity with you personally and with your family, and also with the various initiatives that you're doing. Um, but just before we enter into that uh, uh, conversation, um, I would like, I'm interested to hear from you how art has been a, a source of healing, a source of therapy. Um, I, yes, you know, art can be a collective um, therapy to Palestinians, and it's very applicable to our situation, but I think everybody here uh, can relate to their different problems in life and how art can help them. So maybe how can art help oppressed people in the world as a form of healing and also us individually in our walks in life, the walking through uh, the, the troubles of life? Well, in general, there is a, a study and uh, people who, who work on using arts as a way of therapy, uh, not just in Palestine, in general, in the whole world. I mean, uh, using music or dance or uh, drawings and so on. Uh, it's a way of relaxing and uh, expressing uh, your emotions and, uh, and expressing yourself, the anger maybe inside, the sorrow, uh, the pain as well. And you express it in a different way. Uh, when you are happy, uh, there's a different way. When you are sad uh, as well. And this is the way how artists as well use art. Some of them uh, wrote poems about uh, losing uh, a friend uh, who was killed by the Israeli occupation or others talking about friends who are in prison. 
uh, Walid Daqa, I'm talking um, too much about Walid Daqa because he's the case now, because what he's suffering inside prison, Walid wrote several books and he expressed himself and his emotion and uh, 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 through his, his, uh, his books. Um, I mean, it's very important for us uh, to use as well, again, art as a therapy as well for us to stay human. This is what I said. We need to stay human. We need to, to express the pain, the sorrow, the fun, the, the laugh, the, the losing, the, the marriage, uh, and, and, and uh, so on, as any, any person in, in the world, how they use art. But for us, it's more because there's more uh sorrow there's more more pain and so um so uh, during uh, my work uh, we have worked on and on so many workshops and events inside Yabus and in other places using art as a therapy with uh, with kids especially kids who went uh, through a specific tragic or a trauma uh, through arrest or demolishing of houses and and so on how we worked with them to um we brought them to the center we worked with them with uh, with uh, with artists and so on uh to give them a space and as well a way to uh to express themselves we use as well uh, one kind of of uh, of issue with the kids with the dance with the free, uh, how to express them uh, themselves with the free emotions and free movements uh, as well um so it is used as a therapy uh, as well uh, and it is expressed through different ways uh, how we use art music dance theater and uh, and and uh, and so on um, I use it a lot, to be honest. It's very important for me because uh, going through several uh, issues, you need a space, time for yourself as well to absorb what's happening, to express it, and to find tools to use it to uh, to feel more relaxed and uh, being able to continue as well. Um. Here at Sabil, at Kumi, uh, the people here participating, how can we be in solidarity, uh, firstly, with you and with what your family is going through right now? And uh, how can also be we be in solidarity in supporting art uh, projects, festivals, organizations in Palestine? Well, um... Uh, first, I'm I'm really sorry. I I saw somebody uh, talking about my dog, so <laughs> he was uh, all around. Sorry with the noise, but uh, um, um, and I think it's very important um, to keep talking about what's happening here for cultural institutions and artists and uh, musicians and uh, and for the Palestinian people here. I mean, uh, as well uh, to keep organizing these sessions, conferences, uh, meetings uh, with different people uh, from different parts of, of Palestine talking about as well the situation. And well, as well for you to speak out and loud about what you see and what you hear, especially those who have visited the Palestine and saw with their own eyes what's happening here in Palestine and witness exactly uh, what the Palestinian people are facing. Um, I mean, address your representatives, uh, your congressmen, senators, uh, uh, politicians about, about the situation here. Um, Held them accountable as well, what they are doing for, for people who are in pain, especially uh, people who are supporting Israel and considered uh, as friends of uh, of uh, Israel, participate in events for Palestine in your country. Um, uh, organize as well uh, in 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 your place uh, readings, uh, demonstrations, uh, cultural activities, and host Palestinians maybe in your in your neighborhood who are around and be part of 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 this event. Um, write letters 
petitions as well and send it to your representatives and uh, even send uh, for the uh, Israeli embassy in your country asking them questioning uh, their morality and what they are doing in, 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 in Palestine as well. Address your representative in Palestine if you have a representative office, consulate, embassy and so on. Ask them what they are doing for Palestinians as well. What is their position in regards to what's happening in Gaza or in Jerusalem or on uh, prison and, and, uh, and so on. Now for supporting culture, and uh, and arts um uh, culture unfortunately in the political situation we are living uh, culture is not a priority for so many donors for so many governments and so on so the cultural organizations are uh, suffering um, from attacks from the Israeli occupation and from the lack of, of support and, and, and funding. These cultural institutions need your support as well. Uh, if, if something happened for these cultural institutions, we need your support as well, like when they attack the Abus or the National Conservatory or any other institution, as well, this is very important for you to speak about it. Financially, who, uh, who can support it is um, uh, it is uh, very much appreciated uh, for we have so many cultural uh, organizations in Jerusalem, in Ramallah, in Gaza, in in, in Jenin, um, like the Freedom Theater and other uh, institutions. That it is always welcoming any support, uh, small supports, uh, donations, and and so on. And maybe organizing cultural activities, inviting. If some of you are artists, uh, we would love to have connection with you, invite you to be part of our cultural activities and maybe inviting Palestinian artists from here, going to your country and, uh, and performing. There are different ways. And the most important thing I always say in culture, especially that it was practiced as well in South Africa and in other uh, places, is uh, the BDS movement, which is very important for us. Uh, especially um, that it will help as well uh, um, uh, when when you take a position against uh, uh, the oppression that is happening here from artists not coming and performing, uh, supporting as well uh, political positions in regards to the semester is is very important as cultural institutions. Uh, we think this is a very important uh, as well issue to work on uh, in your countries. Yes, and I would encourage people to to also uh, see how you can uh, be in solidarity more with um, with Rania and her family and then with other initiatives in Jerusalem as well. Um, uh, Ryan, if you just give me um, a second. Um, for us as a family, um, uh, I didn't speak a lot about our situation, even though what we have been going through for the past nine months, some of you have heard about my son who was 16 years old, was arrested, tortured and beaten. Um, and he's still under house arrest now. Uh, I think you, some of you have been following the issue and wrote about Shadi and prayed for Shadi and, and so on. Um, uh, we need your support by speaking out as well on the issue of children arrest. And um, we have more than 160 children under uh, 18 in prison who are uh, who ha who who've been arrested, uh, interrogated, tortured, and beaten uh, by the occupation. Uh, and we have more than 600 uh, children under house arrest which they are not allowed to leave the house. They are put in prison inside their houses and their parents are playing the role of uh, uh, prisoners uh, and, and keeping their sons at home. And this is what we are facing now with our son Shadi, who, uh, who was arrested on the 18th of October uh, and was tortured in front of our eyes in, inside the house here. He was beaten until they, he uh, fainted, they broke his nose, uh, blood was all over the house, and he stayed in prison for 41 days. Uh, he's at the French school, uh, uh, the Quakers' French school in Ramallah, and his, uh, now he, in his 12th grade, 
He's under house arrest, still under house arrest, is not allowed to leave the house except to go to school. Lately, they allowed him in February to go to school. And one of us should accompany him. We should drive him to school from Jerusalem to Ramallah and bring him back to Jerusalem. And they gave him specific hours during the week that he can go out for two, three hours, um, uh, accompanied by, by myself or my husband and, and, and so on. Uh, Shadi is a case from hundreds of kids, Palestinian kids who are suffering uh, from the Israeli uh, occupation, who were tortured and beaten, and, um, and we're still facing uh, this issue, and he has another court coming on the 23rd of October and the 27th of November. Um, I hope you will follow up the case of Shadi and speak on behalf of the Palestinian children as well who are put in prison for no reason and uh, and try to uh, address this issue because it's very important for us. Yeah, I, uh, I urge everyone to, to stay informed about Shadi's case and, and address the whole issue in general of uh, child arrest and, and children, Palestinian children being put in jail. Uh, Rania, I would like to thank you for all your work. I know that you and your family are paying a price and I want to tell you that we recognize it, we see it and we hear you uh, and we will try and do something about that. But I think um, what you have done in creating with this, you know, this amazing institution, amazing organization, your legacy will continue, and I would really like to thank you for all that you've done. Um, so yeah, I don't have, I don't know, <laughs> it's hard for me to express how much I'd like to thank you, but thank you very thank much. You. Uh, thank you. It, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for organizing this, and thank you for giving me the chance to speak about culture, situation, our personal situation, and my son Shadi. And uh, hopefully we'll have other occasion to, to and good occasion to speak about as well um, the cultural life and the success and the achievements of cultural life in, uh, in the city as well, in yeah. Palestine. God willing, God willing. Inshallah. 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 Thank you, Rania, and thank you everybody thank you. Who, who have attended. Um, it was a very powerful and moving session. For next week, we will be uh, having Lama Mansour, who will be talking to us about Palestinian uh, discrimination within Israel and education, uh, particularly in higher education. So stay tuned for next week as we'll be uh, delving into that, which is the start of the school year for many uh, students. Uh, this, the school year has begun for many Palestinians also in the West Bank. Um, so uh, please um, uh, stay tuned to that and, and, and join us to another uh, good session, another powerful session. Uh, and with that, I will close this Kumi session uh, for everyone. So thank you very much. <laughs>